dirt roads to rock crawling, tuba chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey Podcast, episode 279. I am here with three esteemed guests here at Trail Hero 2024. And uh, once I say your name and introduce you, you'll talk just so our listeners know what your voice sounds like. First up is Corey Seacrest, owner of Big Daddy, founder of Miracle Trust. How are you today? I am excellent. Excellent. Right on. So there's Corey. Sitting across from me, no stranger to the podcast, Jake White from Cardo Tracks. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm damn good. Good. Damn good. I'm sad the week's almost over, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And sitting next to Jake is Ricky Berry, marketing at RCV Performance. How are you doing, Ricky? I'm doing better than I deserve. Saw you out on the trail today, doing a little wheeling. Absolutely. It's in the uh, golf cart. Sun. Yeah, just doing a little <laughs> golf cart wheeling. It's all right. I got a golf cart now, too, so it's all good. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. So um, let's start with everybody's background of how you got into four-wheeling and uh, your experience at Trail here this year. So, uh, Jake, you've been here a few years. What, what year number is this? This is year nine for me at Trail Hero. I've never missed one, and I've been part of it since before the beginning. Um Rich and I map the mountain before the first year, so I've been on board since before. It so you're started, an OG. Actually. OG. I'm an OG. Because this is the ninth year. This of is the trail ninth here. year. Yep. Yes. So um, I've never missed one. Um, my family's been to almost all of them. They've missed one. James and Jennifer have missed okay. one. But um, I've I've made it to all of them. So, but yeah, Rich and I mapped everything in August before the first year. It's brutally hot. Hotter than it is now. Really? 10 plus every day. It was awful. My boot m- melted to the transmission tunnel in his buggy. <laughs> and, yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> but um, we got it all mapped and got the maps out there. And they, they're they the, the maps of the mountain now. So we got in before really anybody could compete the with The ground us. So, floor. Yeah, That's cool. So it's pretty cool. Um, and we support the event. We've done it for years now. We provide our maps at no charge to all the guides to support Rich and his cause, making sure everybody knows where they're going the guides are prepared and they know how to keep their their riders on the trail and run the right route for what it's rated for so um yeah i'm i'm og trail hero i guess that's so, that's cool yeah right on yep. and and how did you get into four wheeling i know you're a jeep guy you got some cool cool yeah, jeeps I've, I've had a one 1982 scrambler since i turned 16 my dad and i found it in birmingham alabama and i drove it through high school and into college um, and then things broke, and I stayed uh, involved with the National Club Scrambler Owners Association and ended up winning a Jeep, another Scrambler, That's right. that they'd built from, for charity. Uh, it was split 50-50 between St. Jude Children's Hospital and Blue Ribbon Coalition. So um, I've been driving it ever since. We've had it about 16 years now. Um, wow. So it's pretty cool, and I drive it all the way across the country. And Yeah, you've driven um, it out here. Yep. I didn't make it this years. year, yeah. and I had a lot going on, including – framing of a miracle trust building which we'll talk about in a minute absolutely Um, but i I had a a crew that was willing to help me so i needed to stay put and we decided to fly this year but yeah i drive it it's four days out four days back so that's eight days total it's a big commitment and uh that's no air conditioning that's solo pulling a trailer with a rooftop tent so it's kind of hardcore and then i wheel it out here and then go home yeah no cruise control uh no cruise no it's got a um yeah no cruise it's just pretty pretty basic no adaptive cruise control <laughs> no 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 not at all so but yeah I've, I've since i got that first scrambler back in the day that's kind of how i got into off-roading and driving it playing around on power line trails in birmingham alabama um and then some uh gray rock park uh which is uh an old park in the birmingham area and then uh moved to huntsville alabama got involved with a local club there and then president of the scrambler owners association for 10 years that's right. so i've got a lot of history and wheeling and clubs and and that kind of thing and then our business has kept me in this sport so that's cool um i'm all in now with this yeah. business so yeah. I'm, I'm wheeling all the time so i met a lot of great people along the yep. way including ricky yeah it's a nice segue right yeah, there so that, great yeah. segue look at that <laughs> all right ricky let's let's hear your background into four wheeling and trail hero here oh man well uh, four wheeling i went off with my dad in a cj5 when i was uh too young to even remember and uh, so started doing that and kind of just really 
picked up kind of like on the media side of it. I thought pictures were cool when I was a young kid, and I was like, oh, I'll take some pictures. That's and right. You're a photography guy. Yeah, so it spiraled out from that. Uh, I went down and did an event with Dan DeBose at Motobilt when I was like 16 years old, met some guys at Crawl Magazine, got a job. Uh, and that was my first intro to the industry. Wow. So, you know, from 17 years old to on, I've been professionally involved in off-road motorsports and, and the media side of things and the marketing side and all that. Sure. So, uh, it's been super fun. And then, you know, flash forward to, I don't know, 10 years or so, I got involved with RCV Performance, doing uh, marketing and sales and trade shows and all sorts of stuff like that with them. And I love it. I, it's it's easy to work for a company you believe in. So sure. I have a great time. and. Uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of four wheeling and a whole bunch of axles, and now I need a place to put it all. So. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Store all your junk. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Corey, what's your uh, background in the four wheeling and trail hero here? Man, I started out four wheeling. My earliest memories are cruising in the in an F two fifty with my dad on level B maintenance roads in Iowa because we didn't have any way to go four wheeling. It was just wait, level B. Yeah, so How does that nobody rating? here knows what that is. What's I that know, compared yeah. to, to the that? one to fifteen trail hero rating? So they're just <laughs> <laughs> that's a two. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they're unmaintained roads. They're like the roads that farmers use out in the countryside. They're not gravel. Okay. They're just mud. And okay. when when it rains, you can go out and you can hit hit the the road. The farmers don't like it because you rut them up. Sure. But, that was how I kind of got started in, in off-roading, and my first vehicle ended up being, a, ironically, like Ricky, a CJ5, and um, had Mud Kings on it, you know, with little white spokes, and um, I, my wife and I ended up moving to Colorado Springs, and I ended up working at Four Wheel Parts Performance Centers really early back in the day. A lot of people don't know that, but um, I... Uh, actually sold parts to jt taylor and uh robert lucero really? who owns bf bfe now and uh just kind of r weird randomness but you know that's how kind of my uh start into that that industry worked and how i guess i know so many people in in the market now but yeah yeah cool. that's that's cool cj5 yeah i still have my cj5 um so uh then you just acquired a new rig Last year, uh, e e yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little iconic rig. Two years, been two years? about a year and a half. Year and a year and a half. And a half. Yeah, okay, it was, we'll it split was the just difference. after Moab uh, or Easter Jeep Safari last year, 2023, that I actually secured the deal. So, thank you again, Larry and Cherry. What is that rig for our listeners that don't know? Uh, Big Daddy. It's an orange LJ that Larry and uh, crew built. It was actually the last Poison Spider build that they did. Um, a lot of people know. Uh, Daddy Long Legs. This looks a lot like that, but it was kind of the culmination of a lot of their knowledge in the industry, and right. uh, they they built this, and um, I've oogled over it my whole entire existence after, or uh, its existence, I should say, and uh, saw it at SEMA when it was there, saw it on the cover of Crawl, and every time I've been around it, yeah. I've just, man, I wish I could have that, but never thought in a million years I'd actually own it. Sure. So I'm grateful. That's super cool, right? I mean, it's, it's neat, our industry. I mean, like you say, you're selling parts to jt and stuff but it it's small but it's big but we all kind of cross paths somewhere along the line and yeah you start throwing it out there everything's for sale everything's for sale you just what's the price yeah yeah <laughs> L luckily right place right time yeah, and i you know that's the other thing i was just gonna say right place right time certainly didn't want to persuade them out of it i mean it, they had so much blood sweat and tears and you know all sure. the all the emotions from poisons dating back to their poison spider days that i definitely wanted them to be willing and able to to let it go and i'm really glad they picked me so right on pick me pick me <laughs> uh, that's cool yeah so um Trail Hero 2024. So how's this event been going? I'm, I'm going to go back to you, Jake, because you've seen it from day one and how this thing has evolved. I've been, this is my fifth year, and, I mean, it's grown tenfold every year since I've been, and it, it's becoming quite the uh, monster here. Yeah, it has. I remember the first vendor show, and it was like a couple of vendors hanging out in that parking lot, and wasn't a lot of traffic, nothing like this year. Right. Um, and it was kind of a... I think everybody that was there that year saw Rich's vision and understood he had a good way of selling that vision and people understanding where it was going to be. And we had a lot of faith in how he would drive the event and continue it to grow. And I think he's got a great crew of people that support him locally. 
um, and some that travel here to help support him, um, staff and friends. And they all collectively understand that vision of where he's going with it. And um, I love it. I've, I've, I've tried to sell the event on a lot of friends. And there's right. quite a contingency from Alabama here this year, actually. Um, not all because of me, but it's right. just uh, it's kind of fun to remember being here and people are like alabama what the heck and rich used to always joke it and say well this is jake he's from alabama it's another country yeah another country and, uh, that was kind of his <laughs> alabama thing. stan and, yeah it's yeah, alabama, alabama stan. stan yeah <laughs> but uh yeah like i've got a friend uh ricky knows him too Britt mansell who started a business called american adventure lab and um brit now lives in st george with his family and they live out here um who else um has moved out here um Lee, Michael, Lee yeah. Michael Lee's moved out here, Ultra <clears throat> Four racer uh, in side by sides. Uh, he's a golf cart racer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But he's uh, moved his family out here. Um, there's others. Ricky's an Alabama native. We'll yeah. call him. Yeah. So he's out here. We're out here. Dan Dubose with Moto Built's out here. They're an Alabama business. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of folks. It's kind of cool. But we've seen it grow, and it's fun to see more people. It's starting to grow legs. I think it's really people are recognizing what the event is all about, and um, yeah, it's kind of tell everybody it's just a carnival of off roading. It, it is, is, but it but it's, it's not ultra four. It's, it's not king of the hammers. It's not either. king of the hammers. Yeah. That's what I was just gonna say. This is like, I mean, it's massive, but it's nowhere near <laughs> king of the hammers, which is the good thing. And it's family orientated. Um, it's something for everybody. Yep. You know, you want an Airbnb? There's plenty of them in town with a swimming pool, and you know, you want to go camp? You can camp. You know, you want to stay in a hotel? You can do that. I mean, there's just so many options here. For yeah, families and our family, the way we work with our event um, and our families line up with our son's fall break nicely, so they usually fly. I start driving ahead of them, <laughs> four <laughs> days ahead, trying trying to beat them here. But when they get here, we do family stuff. So we've in the nine years we've been coming out here, we've done all of the national park trips. So oh, we've really? gone out to the Sweet. North Rim. There's two ways to get to the North Rim. You can go to the lodge. That's the the formal regular old national park experience and then you can drive to toro weep too we've got a map of that by the way oh and um that'll get you a shameless plug right to the rim (laughs) um yeah i know you two have been there uh ricky and morgan have been out there uh yeah we went right to the edge of the grand canyon on the on the other side yeah right yep it's really cool side by side or did you did you because you can get there from here with the side by side yeah we we drove all the way around the long way okay and then came up from the south and, uh, you know, I just had to propose to her real quick at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, a little quick oh. proposal. Oh. And, uh, she said yes, by the way. Was that so, this yeah. trip? Uh, no. It was two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. I believe. Nice. They're, they're married now, Jason. I was going to say, try to keep up. Now? Is everything? <laughs> I, hey, I, don't, I try to stay out of the personal lives of my friends. <laughs> so here we go. But yeah. So you got North Rim. You got uh, Bryce Canyon's a day yeah. trip out and back. You're at the front gate of Zion in Zion. 30, 35 minutes. You're, yeah. you're in Springdale going into the park. We went to Brian Head and um, Cedar Breaks, which was really cool. Cedar Breaks is really similar to Bryce. Um, and you get to uh, the top of Brian Head. You can drive a gravel road up the top. It's 11,600 feet. Wow. Which is really pretty high for Utah. Yeah. It's not the highest that's point in Utah, high. but it's on up there. Yeah. So that's a cool experience. All these things you can do in a day trip yeah. from here. So that's also a big draw for the event. Sure. If you're bringing a family, if you can get them out here ahead of time, um, before the event really kicks off, you can do those things and then do four wheel and stuff and experience Trail Hero as well. And a lot of the venues, things that are happening this week are free. You can go and watch yep. Trailbreaker at no charge. Yep. I Which mean, you got to get in the park um, or you can go the back way and come through sure. the, the trail entrances. Um, but yeah, it's a cool experience. Kids get to see some pretty incredible stuff. And just yesterday, it was a 15 year old kid that won the trailbreaker how about that um and my son the 15 year old is sitting there going holy crap i'm yeah i'm learning how to drive and this kid's wheeling with and beating grown men on, um on the arguably the hardest toughest oh, terrain right? absolutely yeah known, it's known it's known nuts man. oh yeah. yeah and uh these are top drivers in the world that that rich has um gotten here and um it's a pretty awesome experience um, and it's not cone dodging. No, uh, there's no which real. Doing today. There's really we no rules today. to trail breaker other no. than not touching the feather flags, which yep. are your gates. So you can pick any line you need to make. You can reverse any time you up, want. Forward. Um, you it can be do. pretty Side thrilling at times. There's some. There's some whoop how you got to throw in to get up some of these climbs. Um, some of the more technical drivers can't do that. Um, they've long struggled a little bit that with that yesterday. He's just not a whoop how driver. He's a very good technical, technical. driver. 
Um, so you kind of have a have to have a mix of both. Yeah. Um, it's it's not we rock. It's kind of different. So um, it's an interesting experience and fun, and it changes every year, every single time. Uh, Rich lays out a course for Trailbreaker. Oh yeah. Um, he's picked a different one, and for those that don't know, Trailbreaker it's the top ten or so drivers in the world that compete in it, and rich lays out the course and then whoever wins it has broken the trail if they've made it all the right. way through they get to name it so there's trail trails now on our map that are former trail breaker courses that have been named starting with year one with um jeff mckinley iron man, iron man. he named it iron man so but you can't top dave wong's win uh dave finished and won and rich asked him so what are you going to name it and he he named it the wong way yeah, wong absolutely way. So, had to that's hilarious had to. so had to. but yeah it's been awesome <laughs> watching it grow and and um seeing what all yeah he's brought to the table um he's always modifying it and changing things trying to adapt for for vendors and the vendor experience and trying to hone in on what really works and i think he really listens to people and and makes changes he's always changing stuff to try and modify there's no perfect playbook yet so he's he's changing things to make sure that it's adapting to what people want and and trying to keep keep everybody happy as he can yeah so, and there, good. there's something to do from sun up to way past sundown here and that's you know he made it so that you if you want to be busy all day you can be yep and, and yeah you can compete you can participate you can go to go watch live music you can go to the vendor show you can go play in the lake i mean you can do just about anything on yeah the, on the and mountain that here. vendor show uh you know is incredible i mean i i think it's you know moab's always had an incredible show but this this one's catching up real quick yeah one other thing i like about rich is he'll uh it's kind of his mantra is if you come up with a good idea out here um you do think it. of something you want to do he says well you own it yeah. go do it and i'll support you however you want right. to do it and he's been pretty good about that doing different things and changing things um cory and i have both sponsored um the the guide shirts the guides have mm-hmm. official trail guide shirts we've helped support that uh by providing the shirts for them um that's kind of just one example of different opportunities like that so uh he's got his list of things that you can engage with for the event as a sponsor but um, you come up with your own idea and go to him with it, and he's he's pretty much open ears That's all the cool. time. So it's yeah. it's cool. I like that about Rich. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So uh, Corey, um, your involvement here. How long have you been involved with Trail Hero and sponsoring and stuff? Well, just about from day one too. In fact, I can remember many years ago, uh, me, Woody, uh, Jake, and Rich all jumping in buggies together and going out and mapping a few a few routes. And just having a great day, super fun. It just blew my mind with cool. the kind of stuff that you could do out here. Yeah, and just the terrain and how you can, you know, really use the mountain essentially the way you want. Um, it's just spectacular. So, and uh, yeah, we've been involved in one way or the other. I mean, we've sponsored it. We've brought Ian Johnson out here one year uh, and uh, sponsored trails. We did the Milt's Miracle Trust Mile a yeah, few years. That's right. I went on that one. Ian was in our booth. Uh, we had him out on a trail, so a lot of people got to meet him, which was super awesome. And uh, and like Jake mentioned, you know, Miracle Trust has been doing the guide shirts along with Cardo Tracks for the last few years. And we love supporting not just the event, but also the, the volunteers and the people that are in the event because sure. they're the ones that make volunteers. it happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Ricky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How's your... your- trip going this year out here man it's great so this is officially i believe my fourth trail hero okay Um, we come out here uh in a a vendor capacity but of course being that i'm an enthusiast i get to enjoy the uh, industry trail rides and you know do some media runs and rub some elbows and and hang out with my friends and uh, it's it's a pretty uh a pretty well-rounded event for for me and us as a company right so like when i come out here I come, you know, the day it starts and just get as much, because it officially starts, what, Monday? Monday, technically, yeah. Yeah, so we'll arrive in town from Tennessee uh, on Sunday, just kind of get our life together a little bit, and then we'll full trail hero and uh, commit, so. Uh, Starting with no other than a golf tournament for off-roaders. Yeah, golf tournament. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I will have to uh, admit I've never done the golf tournament, so I'm not much of a golfer. Uh, Neither are the rest of us. I yeah. am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was in the golf industry for 29 years. Oh, so you so you've dabbled. So we we've dabbled. Yeah. So I've played in the golf tournament since you know I started coming here, and it, it's fun. But it's gotten it was like 
serious 18 hole normal golf tournament type deal at the beginning, and now it's just become a just a game of whack fuck basically yeah just i like go out that there and have a good time and rich you know says that right there that hey it's just go let's we're just out here to have fun there's going to be some adult beverages everybody's going to have a good time and i'm cool with that too because for me now in my golf career I love just going out and having a good time with who I play with. You know, it's like right. that dictates how it's very social. How the day is gonna be. Oh, it's super social. Very social. And we had a great foursome this year, and we we some people got over the handlebars a little bit, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was over fun the now. steering wheel. Yeah, but and we played. We ended up playing pretty well, but uh, you got to cheat pretty hard. I mean, play pretty good if you want to win this thing. You know, right? Yeah. So, so, so yeah. and it's for charity. We and do have to admit it's thing. for charity. And you, that's you, you, you know, you can't sit there and go, oh well, this because we only played nine holes this year, and it's like some people were going, oh well, we should be eighteen and blah blah blah. It's for freaking charity. You're gonna go out there and have a good time. Yep. And what's the charity? Uh, four wheel to hill. Perfect. Four wheel to hill, yep. yeah, yep. super cool. I mean, it's great. And then I dress up in you know American, you know, uh, everything. Uh, he's got an eagle on down his to shirt. the underwear. I got like, a he's got like an eagle on there. Yeah, I mean, it's just American flag shorts, belt, everything, and so it's fun. People get into it. There was one guy dressed up as Bob Ross this year. He had a paintbrush in his pocket. That's fantastic. Oh, I saw oh yeah. That. So, I saw so that. and Rich was Happy Gilmore. And Rich was Happy Gilmore. Oh, really? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So okay. That. So maybe I should look it, into this. You golf. Do, yeah. You don't yeah. have to play a, yeah. a lick of yeah. golf. Yeah. Like Glenn plays in it. He actually has a shirt from Pit Viper that says "fuck golf" on it, but it's got like this country club logo and. And it's real small on the bottom, so you got to kind of look at it close. But he he just goes out there to have fun because he hates the game of golf. Yeah, but I'm I'm willing to give it a, a good, try. It's a good time. I'm willing to give it a try. When I come out here, I mean, it's so this place is the holy grail of four wheeling for a guy that likes to rock crawl. So you exactly. know, for me, I come out here and it's hard to peel me off of the yeah. trails, even in this heat this year. This year has been pretty brutal. Oh, this has been brutal, yeah. Um, but I still, I mean, I I would ride all the way up to the vendor show, given the opportunity, yep. and and just you know melt out there. But it's it's so fun. This terrain, you know, it's the, anybody that's here is the is the top of the industry. Like they're the most, not necessarily by like capability or vehicle, but at their passion. Sure, right. Like th- these are this it's is well the said. top. Yeah. percentile well of people that well that it's a wheeling event too yeah i mean and that's you bring real wheelers that that want to come out here and just have fun yeah these wheel. are the, the true yeah. passionate enthusiasts and yep. you know this is the the cream of the crop as far as that's concerned and everybody like-minded it's individuals true. get along together so well absolutely and, i mean it's such a good event from people all over the country i've got some friends from canada here you know that i actually hey. met at the trade show and I sold them axles, right? Now we're friends, and I see them every year. You know, I've got friends from all over here. Sure. You know, and I've come from Tennessee. I see Jake more in Utah than I see him on the East Coast. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> true. They're only a few hours it's apart. True. So, yeah. you know, it really brings a lot of people together. So I love this event, and uh, I was just telling my wife today that it's, I mean, I have a I have a UTV that I bring here. You know, I'm a I'm a Jeep guy. Golf cart. I have a yeah, golf cart. I have just a say, call it what it is. You know, I have a UTV. I enjoy it. <laughs> golf cart. <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you guys, but my UTV outwheeled one ton Jeeps all week. Oh, long. I know they're so, super cable. Oh, they're cool. it's, it's crazy to see how. But and I have I have a JK on 40s, right? Sure. I would way rather bring the UTV here. Um, it's just more agile, and more it's, fun. You can do you know absolutely. more trails, but. Yeah. Um, I told her because I don't like really riding the UTV that much at home. Uh-huh. But I would totally have one just to have like oh, even sure. if it was just for this. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Yeah, you know this. Yeah. That's what this event. So much fun. It's worth traveling across country one time a year to have a whole vehicle dedicated. So you need to, me. to stick around in a couple of weeks. They got UTV takeover. Yeah, I make it like a three week ordeal. I, or something I've considered that for sure. You know, I mean, we the, the UTV is so versatile that. Um, it can be, you know, the UTV takeover crowd is generally like a higher speed, you know, different kind of yeah. uh, wheeling mentality than I enjoy. Not to say that I don't enjoy going fast and doing the dune thing and, you know, but uh, I'm afraid my rig's about to fall apart from going through the nuisance bumps at 60 miles an hour for the last four days. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a break. Okay. Go back to rock crawling in Tennessee. Okay. So how but far off is UTV takeover? It's like a week and a half after... Trail event. hero, yeah. Okay, so maybe I'm, maybe you fly home and then fly back. Leave I've all your, just leave it your out stuff here. out here. I've sometime. heard it is huge. I'm, yeah. I'm being twisted. My arm's being twisted to come back for UTV takeover, mm. and I might do it. My arm's been twisted. I've several got a times. can ham, uh, can am. Um, 
but uh, yeah, rock crawler. Sounds I delicious. love my rock crawler. It is. It's it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, Desert do you treat your Can Am like your rock crawler, or do you just genuinely just yeah? Put but on it the flexes other like path. a brick, right? So it's different wheeling, and and um, I have some varied terrain behind my house: desert, rock crawling, you know, high, low, everything, and uh, it flexes like a brick. So it's like. I've had to learn or adapt my driving style to it a little bit. I'm not a go fast guy, but I've learning to go fast out in the desert. That's fun. I got you know some go fast friends out there, Randy Slauson. That's freaking ridiculous, and I just I'm learning to accept speed a little bit more. It, but it's I love the slow, technical, like trail breaker, rock crawling. That's agreed, what I love. Agreed. Yeah, and that's I in this UTV. I like to force it to do things, and maybe that's why I enjoy it so much. Yeah, is because I p- pull it out of its category. Yeah, and I I literally have Jeep written on the front of it right now to ride with everybody. So. It's super cap- <laughs> They're super capable, and that's the great thing. And it's I mean, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have it brought to our sport? You right. know, so you can sit there. We joke around golf cart. I'll joke around. I have a golf cart. I have a Jeep. I have freaking buggy. Whatever. It's whatever gets you out and having fun out here in the in the you know yeah. different parks and and, and, and all it takes is lands and stuff. a little bit of experience and some education and you know these new enthusiasts yeah are just as passionate as we oh, are oh yeah oh for sure yeah. that's it that's i mean i've seen everything over the years out there and it's like hey if you're out here having a good time you know so be it as long as you don't drive a toyota it's all good yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so this is my fourth year fourth year here you know what fj toyota. stands for right what's it stand for fake jeep <laughs> oh fake jeep <laughs> i've never heard that one yeah okay here you I, go I've, what I've do you plug your ears else. <laughs> i've heard something else <laughs> well in my de- own defense or whatever i stay with woody swear engine that stay oh, up yeah. at his house when i'm here who's like the king i think he invented toyota so i can give him a hard time about right it. uh-huh woody started i hate mud which yep. is the like the toyota forum there's so much information on it and he still gets new signups every day in a world of dead forums these days that's yeah. one that's still alive and active it it's crazy. Oh, that's because yeah. the toyota enthusiast is like super old yeah yeah yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah we have a saying on this podcast toyota suck we try to work it into every podcast so there it is yeah um, oh it's so naturally <laughs> done too you know wow. yeah. we didn't even know it he yeah. just rolls off the tongue right we in did there. not have yeah. to force that at all <laughs> bless their hearts yeah, yeah bless <laughs> their <laughs> hearts there you go <laughs> who'd have thought we were talking about is that UTVs a southern bless your heart like toyota yeah, yeah. Like, is that, that's a southern bless your heart that was yeah it has two <laughs> meetings you pick okay. which one yeah i know so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't learn that until like five years ago and i had a, a friend from the south and he'd always say jason bless your heart and i'm like well that's very nice and then i found out what real that i'm like all right well it depends no 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 hold on now it, it does now it doesn't ways. mean one or the other it could mean it, it, there's two meanings so okay. it, 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 a friend telling you that is safe you're fine okay uh, but you know, like two women in the grocery store, and this other woman's just being awful. And the, you know, the first one's like, "Well, bless your heart." Yep. <laughs> that's the very nice say- way of saying what they say out here. F off. Right. Yeah. But we don't say that in the South. Yeah. We say, "Bless your heart." Okay, it's, so, so there's good. two so meanings, nice but yeah. that's not what your friend meant. No. He, he literally is just like, "Well, bless your heart." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, all it's, it's all about the pause. It's all about the pause before you say okay. it. So if yeah. you look at somebody and okay. you pause for a long time, and then. Bless your heart. Then you know, that pause is really inflecting. That's some, mm, our that's language it. is an art form. It really is. I mean, it really is. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's, I love. Yeah. I love listening. We to are you. artists with the, the spoken Southerners. language. Yeah. Yeah. Linguists. Yeah. I changed my own oil. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. yeah, there's no, oil. There's oil, and then there's oil, and then there's oil. Oil. <laughs> In Alabama, we change our oil. Yeah. Just the yeah. oil. So good. Yeah, I you also it. got wool socks, just wool. Oh. Right, that's right. Yeah. It comes it. from a different the, animal. The whiskey's <laughs> kicking in. I love it. <laughs> All right, so there's our southern lesson right now. <laughs> there's more to it. We could do a different podcast. I know, that could be that. a whole yeah, other podcast, <laughs> could it? That, well, I'll mark there's that down. A whole for bunch the of term- yeah, there's a bunch of terminologies. You know, Maybe next probably. year we get the whole Alabama gang together. Oh, that would here, be fun. And we just have Alabama stuff. Get some moonshine going. Oh, man. Yeah. You know what I had the other day at camp next to us? Uh, sarsaparilla moonshine. Mm, so it's yeah. root beer. Mm-hmm. Man, I can't hear that word without thinking of Sam Elliott and the Big Lebowski. <laughs> right? Sarsaparilla. <laughs> I wish I could talk like that, man. I'll Ram you, trucks are the most powerful trucks in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Too bad that guy doesn't think like us. But <laughs> So let's 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 dive into this miracle trust building thing. Um it's uh you know, 
it's I think it's pretty much a dream of anybody that's into any gearhead mechanical anything uh, to have some sort of a shop. Uh, you know, garage is fine. Garage works. It's adequate. Um, but we grow out of our garages really quick with equipment, our rigs, whatever it may be. And uh, so then, you know, the dream is these these shops that you can like, oh, I got my machine grinding welding shop on this side. I've got places to park the rigs. I got place to park the RV, you know, whatever it may be a wash bay if you want to be super bougie or whatever it is. But um, man cave. Yeah, man cave. And the man cave, too, Sheesh. right? Yes. The, the Something that, that you know, you, your buddies come over and you got a place to open up the refrigerator, have a cold beverage, and, uh, and do some bench racing in a, in a shop. And obviously uh, work on the rigs and keep them, keep them going. So, um, so talk about, uh, Corey, you know, how Miracle Trust started and where, where it is today because... Um, it's pretty spectacular what you guys are doing out there and the flexibility of your product. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been in the building industry for a really long time, and to save a little bit of time, I'll just say that there was a company that was named Miracle Trust that I worked for was around for almost 30 years prior to to me, quote-unquote, resurrecting the, the brand name, if you will. And um, they just closed doors around the time of the economic downturn, had a great product, always such a great loyal following, and I got out of the industry for a little bit, and I just felt like I, I was just such a loyal loyalist when I worked there. I, I was a salesperson for them and um, loved the product, always loved the people, and I found a way to be able to bring that name brand back into the marketplace with a very similar product, except that we made a lot of modern improvements and higher quality, uh, better warranties and things like that that went along with it. Okay. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. I mean, we've you know we just kind of initially got started in um, you know just selling a little bit of everything. I mean, doing shops, doing houses, doing tiny homes, doing aircraft hangers, and you know we literally can sell a building, uh, offer a building to for any use. I mean, if you need a roof and four walls, or maybe six walls in Jake's case, uh-huh. um, or eight. I don't know how many walls you got going on <laughs> on the outside, it's, but it's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated, <laughs> but uh, relationship status complicated. Yeah, but I mean, we pretty much say if you can if you can draw it, we likely can build it. And so our capabilities as far as creating the structure is almost limitless. And what you put on it, whether it's shingle roof or whether you want to do tile or you want to do more of a traditional steel type roof. Uh, same thing for siding. You know, we have people that want to match their house or they have homeowners association or covenants that want, maybe want to do hardy board siding, for example. And, um, you know, the wood and steel combination of our system just allows itself to really be finished off however you want. So the where we're at now is, you know, uh, just we just continue to grow. You know, we're so thankful for our, our customers like Jake, like Ricky very appreciative of um, all the people in the off-road community that have gravitated towards us. We have some really, really great partners in this in this industry, and um, you know we're just continuing to pour our money back into the industry. In fact, I mean it's you know uh, it's our passion, it's my passion, it's my wife and I. We've been doing it forever. My wife grew up. Her dad, her mom, and dad four wheeled with Bigfoot with Bob Chandler. Oh, you got to be kidding! And that's one of the reasons I married her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good quality right there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just being in the off road industry and being such a passion, it's it's where we choose to put our money back into. And Moab Trail Hero, veteran sponsored things and such. So yeah, very cool, very cool. So um, you, Jake and Ricky. Um, talk about starting from like this dream of what kind of shop you were envisioning to where you're at now maybe ricky first because he's he's almost like done with his shop (laughs) yeah mine's long story so (laughs) yeah start with ricky Uh, well (laughs) i was gonna let jake go first since he started first with his project but um three years ago i think he got a couple years let's not let's not name dates okay Um, all right but any anyway uh so really my first introduction to it was uh i'm really good friends with a guy named ian johnson uh, he's got some spiky hair. He did a TV Something show. Something like that, yeah. Uh, the hair is Guy, fabulous. Guy Fieri? Guy Fieri? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's got a, like a cooking show. Yeah. Guy's a Camaro? Oh, no. 
Um, but anyway, so he's he's right down the road from me, and uh, he kind of took me under his wing a little bit from a mechanical standpoint of like when I needed to do some work on my rig, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that's sure. nothing. That's no big deal. You know, oh rebuild a transmission. Yeah, we can do that on the table. No problem. Yeah. Right? Like he's it's no big deal to him, but it was very intimidating to me. So with that being said, he always invited me to his shop where we would do all these projects, and his shop was. Uh, air conditioned, right. heated, and it was super comfortable, and it was super nice in inside. In humid Tennessee, it was quiet. You know, it was finished out. He had his little showroom where we would relax, where we'd have lunch or have beverages or whatever. And it was just such a nice experience working in this shop. Well, it turns out that shop is a miracle trust building, sure. right? So fast forward. Uh, I actually don't remember the timeline of when I met Corey exactly, but I did meet him on the trail, and we got to talking about you know buildings and four wheeling and all that stuff and, and the idea of you know everybody that goes four wheeling wants to put their stuff inside and sure. have a nice place to work on it you know my entire childhood growing up i worked on my stuff at first in a gravel driveway and then i you know i i graduated to a concrete driveway which was amazing right and you know and then i had a one car garage which was also an amazing step up but still it's not a shop right, right. It's still not ian's shop with a lift and air conditioning right and, you know air and all the things that you need to make your hard project actually something you enjoy right right it takes a negative into a positive by just enjoying a place where you're working on it so but the other thing i want to interject real quick is like there's a lot of my friends you know growing up whatever they moved on but like driveway you're working in your driveway and like you can't just shut the garage door and go to bed you right. gotta pick up all your tools <laughs> right. finish whatever you're doing all that stuff and it's like you know, those people would just love to have a garage, right? Yeah, God forbid it rains in yeah. the middle of your project. Yeah, yeah rain, we have this wind, thing. Theft. I mean, it's all yeah. a concern. Yeah. yeah, there's that thing in the South that's called rain. Yeah. And it happens rather often. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah you, you're chased by rain all the time. Right. You're most right. people have live radar they're watching. So. <laughs> in the North, it's snow. In the South, people want to get out of the sun. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just not working in in the elements, right? Right. That's just such a luxury that, um, you know, I wasn't ever really thinking I would have until I I saw the other side, right? You know, the grass was indeed greener. (laughs) And... I, I Ironically, it. the Miracle Trust logo is green. Yeah, how about that? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> so anyway, so I had to have one. So I, I ordered one up. Um, I went kind of modest. You know, I didn't do it like an industrial shop. Like So talk uh, about you know. the process a little bit for listeners out there. It's like, I know you got a detailed website where you can kind of build your little dream deal and then you get hooked up with some designers and stuff so talk about that and that's how they get you okay this is this is the hook (laughs) this is the hook because you get on there and you build your dream and then it's like oh well that's so easy yeah let's do that (laughs) click right (laughs) that's really all it was really i mean i talked to Corey a bunch he helped me through the process he held my hand a lot because i was very intimidated by it it was I'd never done it. I'd never done a, a build project okay. before. You don't have a background in construction. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, it's it's just something that I wasn't familiar with. This is a DIY building, you know, and 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 I'm sure at the time, I was like, well, there's no way I could do it myself. Oh, oh, you were definitely like that. In fact, I can remember Ian and I both talking to you and telling you, Ricky, you can build this building. Yeah. And I mean, one of our slogans is putting you in control of your build, which, you know, our goal is to allow you to either be able to build it yourself. We call our buildings DIY capable, or you can still hire a local contractor and have them put it up. But I I can remember vividly many times where you were like, no way. I could yeah. never so, do that. So what's your, what's your construction like aptitude, I guess you say? Are you comfortable with a skill saw? Are well, you turns, Could you build a shed, spoiler, a wood shed? Spoiler. Okay, here we uh, go. I could have totally done this myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, literally, the part that I hired out was easier than the part that I'm doing now. Right. Okay. So absolutely, it was just my ignorance to the process okay. and my uncertainty that stopped me. And I, and I did hire, you know, after working with Corey, building it out. And this thing was like very residential. So I had residential eaves, I had gutters, I had vinyl front to match my house. You know, it was a little bit more out of the box than the average shop build, which sure. is very residential home garage. You know, HOA, no HOA. Uh, I technically have an HOA, but I think it's fake. 
I think I'm just paying some money to like. <laughs> yeah. It's for the shrubbery the at the entrance. Yeah, I don't That's know. That's all it is. And for the lawn is. guys that do the strip by but, the sidewalk out. Some yeah. guys drinking whiskey every Friday on right? dollar. Yeah. So so the process was, you know, a little bit more in depth, I guess, than say, hey, I want a thirty by forty and you know, so I had sure. I matched the walls on my house, I matched the roof. That's the coolest thing, is I, I, I almost matched I didn't want to exactly match, but I almost matched the roof pitch of my house, which is very extreme. I think it's uh, eight or nine, twelve. Oh, that's um, yeah. So and, and there, he was like, "Yeah, no problem." And I was, "Oh, cool," you know. I was, he's like, "Yeah, it'll just be extra." That's like, oh. the, yeah. We're just yeah, <laughs> it's just an add on. <laughs> just and an add on. Just an extra box to tick. Roof pitch barely. I mean, it does affect pricing, but not much. There is more materials to do a steeper pitch. You know, the it run the noticed. run is I mean, higher, but it's not much. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, the building was the most affordable part. <laughs> like, right. Like, I got out of control a little bit with my finish work um and maybe you know i'll save that for later but the building itself went up in a week wow you know like it was enclosed in a week um with my contractor like i said and i watched it happen i was involved in the process and i was kicking myself a little bit because absolutely i could have handled that it really? turned out so beautiful like seriously your your building's gorgeous thank you for our for the people that are listening where could they take a look if they wanted to see it so i'm gonna do a gallery i, I told I've, I've really gotten into this thing like it's my new passion of you know and every time i do a project in it and you know a, a little feature or whatever i document it on my social media and like my ricky b photography page yeah. but i'm gonna do a, a whole gallery on my website i have an old website i used to do rock bouncing rock crawling okay photo gallery sure. ricky b photography ricky b photography yeah that's oh, actually coming back okay Jake. uh but again that's a, a story probably for i've got an original podcast. sticker yeah, it's that I I will not put on a truck. It's OG, but yeah, I used to do a website. I do vehicle features when the rock bouncing thing started, and you know, so and now you're, and you're going to start doing that in your building, exactly. and you have like an office that you've built into there, right? Well, yeah, I'm going to do well. I mean, I'm going to do a building gallery. I'm going to treat it like a rock bouncer feature because it's so cool. Like, here's the little, here's how it mounts to the eaves. Oh, you know, look at this bracket that does this. Like, there's so many cool features in it that is often overlooked, and and I think it was my like unexperienced self of like well how did how do you mount the wall you know like i don't understand right. because i just didn't know at the time but seeing it oh now i know it's a bracket that's built for it you can't do it wrong like it comes like a like a, a builder a diy kit i mean it was so simple hindsight um you know so and my advice to anybody looking at them is just take the risk you can do it you that's, know? That's or cool. if you don't want to, just hire it out and it's done in a week. That was pretty cool too, because I don't know that I could have done it in a week. Right. But that okay, so that's that's interesting. So now it went week it went up, but then obviously all the gingerbread stuff, making it look nice and all that stuff on the I, outside I, took some time. Yeah, so it was aesthetically outside fully i think it's called the technical term in the contracting world is dried in is that yeah, right yeah dried in mm -hmm. yep. so you know doors windows siding all of the things so it was which is where we got to get jake yeah to. jake's almost dried in he's really close <laughs> yeah my goal is end of october he's probably getting tired of me yelling at him to tell him to get the sheeting on the <laughs> i should have started a counter like when <laughs> Yeah. Like like a countdown <laughs> counter for no KOH no no how many times Corey's told oh. me get it in sheet metal oh. yeah. yeah no 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 yeah it's okay. like passed at least a thousand times I think he's told me now easy oh my god but we'll get to that in a minute so but, so not, from not to steal Ricky's thunder here finish back up yeah so, so exterior once, trim once, and stuff is like the last what percent yeah how long that I mean that takes time that's time yeah so I started this project in March ish I believe okay. uh, I think the building was delivered in March um, and then the building actually beat the concrete there. Wow. So then I poured the concrete, did all the dirt work, uh, and then once the concrete was ready, a week for the building. And that was dried in. That was every, that was shutters on. You got to be kidding And me. you didn't do traditional steel si uh, siding on yours. You wanted for, to make it match your correct. house, so right? Three, three of the sidings, uh, three of the walls are steel. The roof is steel. Um, but the front is vinyl. It matches my house. It's okay. The exact same. I had the contractor come out and he like took a picture of it. Took it this, like matched it. Perfect. Great. Um, you know, just you know, twenty five years newer. So from the sure. road, it looks. I yeah, mean, it just it looks, all blends oh, in. It's sure. beautiful. Yeah, the shutters match. I mean, it's got a little window in the peak, just like my upstairs. Yeah. Thing. I mean, yeah, it, it's it cool. Looks, it looks like it was designed together, honestly. Um, but from that point to where I'm at now, I've been working on it myself. From you know electrical insulation walls, all of that, and uh, I've learned a lot of valuable life skills. I'll tell you that much. 
Um, but I'm just slow as Christmas, buddy. I am just so slow. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, I guess. Uh huh. And th- a here's little the real bit. problem. Don't do anything that's like nice. You know, that's my advice. <laughs> because once you do, it's a rabbit hole. You want it all to be nice. And it's right. so great. Right. It's so great. And then you just spiral out of control. No, no, that's a joke. Do things nice. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. You are, yeah. And it's it's the level of like, I mean, oh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's just a shop, you know, but you don't need to finish it off. But there's, like you said, the passion there that it's like, no, this is my man cave, man. I want this to look freaking cool when your friends walk in and their jaw drops and goes, oh. Well, okay. and that was the most rewarding thing ever. You know, I'm pouring every bit of my blood and sweat and spare time into this project, yeah. you know, doing the finished work. My, I had my wife out there painting, you know, we're just out there with oil-based paint, risking it, sure. you know, and uh, getting it finished out. Then we did floors. Floors was amazing. Floors you know? are great. Yeah, did that you do was, epoxy floor or what did you it's do? It's like a polyaspiratic or something like that, I think is the technical term. Okay. Um, but it's the flake. It's yeah, super hard. That's poly sarsaparilla. That's what it is. <laughs> poly yeah. sarsaparilla. Yeah. Poly southern sarsaparilla. That's right. That's what it is. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I did like OSB walls, painted the OSB walls with super thick paint. It looks really good, surprisingly good. Can't even see the seams. I use wood cool. filler in the seams nice. like you would with sheetrock. Um, you know, fully insulated with residential insulated. And that's what I learned from Ian was the residential insulation. He Everybody, talk, yeah, the people. And I, I don't know what the right way is. And Corey, I'm sure has a ton of information on insulation, right? But it seems like it's an art, not a science. Like it's just what, however you do it is you do it that way. Right? Uh-huh. So like I chose fiberglass residential insulation and it's amazing. Um, you know, but generally speaking, you see these metal buildings and they're like spray foam or die. Yeah. Well, it's because the spacing on the on the secondary members is so far apart. There's just no nothing to attach to in a tri- traditional steel building. Right. You know, it's. I mean, they're. They, I'm not. I would never knock another brand or another style of, of building. Every design has its purpose. But for a guy who's going to be finishing it out, or a gal who's going to be finishing it out and spending time inside of it. You know, having an edge-mounted two-foot-on-center stud wall gives you the flexibility to run electrical, put your plumbing in. You can insulate it effectively. And, that yeah, Ian talks about all the time his uh, um, air conditioning units barely even run. Yeah. You know, in in the Tennessee sun. He's got split split units. I mean, they're not even that big. Yeah. And that's what exactly right. Like, so I had, you know, two-by-tens, two-by-twelves in the roof, and then two-by-sixes on the wall. So I had six inches or five and whatever you know, inches of space yeah. there for insulation. Yeah, and it yeah. just lays the bats in. It was super easy. And then you're you're studded for your walls. Like, you don't have to build a subframe like you would in almost every other metal building. Sure. It's ready to finish out like a house. Yeah. So, I mean, it's super easy for, like I said, I have no experience doing this, and now I feel like I could knock one out of the park for the next one, you know? Yeah, you're just rolling bat-style insulation between studs that are already there, edge-mounted. I mean, it's as simple so as easy. can be. Wow. Yeah, so easy. The insulation was easy. The wiring was easy because it was all there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, just the structure of the building makes it very DIY friendly. And hindsight, you know, I see that all now. It makes perfect sense. It's so clear. And uh, it, it really worked efficiently for me. Um, but then, yeah, then I spiraled out of control with, like, super nice paint. It's all white with these really nice lighting in there. And then they did the floors. And now we're a, we're a no-shoe shop household. You know? No-shoe shop now, take household. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off before you come in my shop, please. Okay, that's super It is bougie. gorgeous. But I the one thing <laughs> that blew my mind about Ricky's situation currently, and I think this just came up like a week ago, is it, when somebody would come into the shop – he would be completely surprised because he would be, and I, I don't want to take this story away from you, but oh, you'd no, be working yeah. working in there and be so in the zone that he wouldn't even know somebody was in the shop. So what did you do? Yeah, so, well, and I can't, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse on this insulation thing, but it's silent in my shop. Is it really? Like, it can be pouring rain. I can barely hear that it's raining outside wow. of the metal roof, right? So I don't hear a lot of the things. You don't open the door and the whole thing rattles and clang when, you know, like a metal building sure. when a door. Sure, sure. So my lovely wife will come in and, you know, she brought me, I believe, like a, a, like a, a hot chicken sandwich pocket thing. She was bringing me a snack, food. And it scared me so bad, I yelled. <laughs> I yelled. She startled me. <laughs> she startled me so much. My wife But here's the, the, here's the best and part. So, you got to hear what he did. So I chose. I, this happened multiple times, and it's just it gives me anxiety now when I'm in there. And, you know, we've got the music going. Sure. Or, or the AC You're in going, your zone. The fan's blowing, and I don't hear her sneaking up on me. And she's not trying to sneak up on me. But she does, and it scares me every time. So I have installed a good old like Please convenience store. Oh, God, yes. That's awesome. Yes, yes. So when they open the door Bing now, bong. 
exactly the noise it makes. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. I love it. Did, We're going to start telling people to do that with their it's shops. A great yeah. fee- it's, it's really, it's calming. <laughs> yeah. It's an anxiety thing. It I'm going to have to do better. that with my wife. <laughs> it's awesome. We actually have... She's Jennifer's nearly killed me enough times with a freaking heart attack in my own in-house garage that I've been working in for years that she now knows to just before she walks into the garage while I'm out there doing something it's just to blink the lights. Oh, in that's the a garage. good call. So, so you guys got a little good. system. Yeah, that's good. and then and yeah, because she's nearly killed me a couple of times with a freaking heart attack. It's like. I yeah. just see feet in front of me, and well, it's God like I look like, up, and it's like I see dead people. Yeah, and it's like, like, oh my God. Grinding, grinding or welding or doing something yeah. dangerous. Yeah. You yep, know? yep. So that's our system, uh, so, but we'll have to implement the doorbell maybe at our so show. So I want to know, yeah. did you go on to Amazon and say 7-Eleven bing-bong doorbell or what? <laughs> you would be How'd surprised how it? many options. And this thing's <laughs> programmable. <laughs> This thing is programmable. I can do all sorts of different sounds, but I want the convenience store. You know, I want it to sound like Mr. Patel's shop when I walk in. Oh, like I love he's, it. He's just that's it's perfect. It's perfect can you pick noise. a different chom for each wife? <laughs> <laughs> that's only for Utah. Yeah, that's, that's only for Utah. <laughs> Sister wives. Oh boy. Yeah. All, right. all right, I got more questions for Ricky, but we got to get caught up with Jake's build here, and it shouldn't take too long. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> when did you start? Three years ago. Yeah, I, I, I heard. I caught that. Shouldn't take. Shouldn't take too long. Oh boy! I heard a week. I heard. Here a week. we go. I don't no. know. All no. right, throw a little shade your way, but oh man, what do you? So talk about your process, Jake, and uh, let's do it within fifteen minutes. Oh, I got a time limit. Well, geez, um, it's coming along nice, nicely. Um, that's yeah, Corey. Back to you. Okay. No, <laughs> no I, I'm. I'm an overthinker, even beyond Ricky. Like I've, I, I think over everything way too much. But I have put a lot of planning into it. There were a lot of steps that I had to uh, do before construction. Um, I ended up with a situation where I needed two retaining walls uh, and a neighbor that wasn't really um, cooperating too well with a, a failing wooden wall that was holding back my yard. So right. uh, I had to bring in some big, right. I found some big barrier blocks that are 35 bucks a pop. They weigh more than my wife's Corolla. Oh my gosh. Um, they're like those big Legos. Yeah. You know, those oh, concrete blocks yeah. you see where they sort of fit yep. together. Yep. A lot so of municipalities. I saw that the Instagram. dimensions are two foot by two foot by four foot, and they weigh 3,600 pounds, and they have little lips on them, so they lock together. And I bought 21 of them, uh, or 20 and a half, I guess, so I could stagger the bottom row from the top row. And um, yeah, that was kind of a big, major first step that, that really took some effort to get in place because. At the end of the day, my back corner of my slab was going to be about 10 feet from that that property line. So I needed to make sure that wasn't going to fail on me, and I needed it to be stable. Um, so we, we did all that, uh, buried a bunch of um, drainage so that I could bring my downspouts off of some gutters on the building into underground pipe to run downhill, downslope right. to daylight so that... Um, you know, I'm not flooding my backyard because this uh, the roof. I mean, I'm a my building is enclosed. I'm 2220 square feet, so 2220 square feet, wow. which is tremendous. And that roof is a lot of sheet flow of water with no, um, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. It just runs off. Yeah, you so it goes into structure to get squared. Yeah, away I got gutters. Or... I've got buried uh, pipe to run it all down to daylight down slope in front of my house instead of into my backyard. So. There's a lot of prep there. Ran a lot of utilities to connect to the house. Um, I redid the um, my meter base needed to be upgraded to a 200 200 situation where I got 200 amps feeding into the house, wow. 200 out yep. in the shop. Nice. Uh, I want to be able to expand electrically uh, welders and you know whatever I want to do down the road. So 200 amps maybe overkill for your regular yard barn, um, but I'm not your normal right. neighbor. Right. Right. Um, so anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's big, and uh, there were a lot of steps more beyond you know your average construction, Complicated. Um, bigger house or bigger shop. Uh, I I call it a house just about, but actually I got a neighbor on this neighborhood app that's um you know the the neighborhood app that's for Karens. Uh-huh. We got some woman around the corner that's Next calling door. it a monstrosity, and I'm like, well, I I take great pride in that. Yeah, that, I'm proud of my yeah, monstrosity. Yeah. I mean, going back to what you're talking about, I mean, it's like that's our dream as off roaders inherently we're all diy to a certain degree as off-roaders you end up with situations off-road where you got to fix stuff on the trail we like to work on our own stuff um 
not all off-roaders, but um, the old school guys are for sure. So this building construction kind of falls into that same mantra and that line of thinking. Right. And that's that was a big appealing thing to me um, because I have been doing quite a bit of the construction myself. Um, I have gotten behind the curve a little bit, timelines with life and work. Sure. Uh, where I've realized I, I've got to bring in some help. So I got a um, framing crew that came in and knocked out a tremendous amount of work. I'm putting nine windows on my south-facing window. Wow. Um, so northern hemisphere, if you know your geography, that's the wall you want if you want to let light in because mm-hmm. the sun's south of you. So yep. my south wall is going to be um, covered in windows. It kind of helps make it look a little better aesthetically from the street breaks up a big wall so it doesn't look like a big commercial building i've got some dimension to it too with a bump out for a a fab room that i've i've added to it so it'll look really good from the street it's not going to look like a big commercial building so that that was kind of our goal but anyway it's very complex and um very very complex um so yeah i'm kind of i'm catching up i before i left for trail hero i had the crew there monday and tuesday of last week um, and they knocked out a ton of work. It was amazing how quickly they worked. It was a crew of about six guys, um, and they were hammering through it. So they were worth every penny. With no experience. They've never built one of our buildings. They never built one of their buildings. Yeah, there was a little bit of head scratching day one to kind of kind of understand and get their bearings on how this all goes together. Um, had a little mistake. Oh, this is a big advantage to this building. We had a mistake. Our concrete guy poured dimensionally a little bit out on one wall. Uh, of that fab room so we were out by a couple of inches and uh that was like day one of this framing crew showing up and the guy's like um we got a problem and we sat there and studied it a little bit and uh the advantage of miracle trust is that the the lumber component means you've got some expansion and some Some you can variate things a little bit and so i had already ordered a secondary order of lumber um to to compensate for some lumber that needed to come out of the roof and get replaced just because it sat up so long because okay. major failure on my part, <laughs> just the timeline. But we had these, um, uh, they're, they're two by eights, I believe. And so we ended up making standard walls on a Miracle Trust buildings. Typically a two by six is what you use, mm-hmm. but to compensate for that extra distance out to the edge of that concrete because we wanted the exterior sheet metal to come down the face oh, of the concrete. Gosh, sure. So we ended up pivoting and going with a two by eight on that wall. Gotcha. I just fortunately had the lumber on site, crews ready to go, and I just said, "Let's use the two by eights." Um, talked to Corey about it on the phone. Very easy to make a phone call and just say, "Hey, what do you think about this? We're having to modify this just a little bit." No matter and that how was, frantic Jake was at the time when he called me, by the way, <laughs> we still got him through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was a, I wasn't super panic mode, but I was a little concerned. Because, you know, I got a crew ready to rip, and I'm like, man, guys, I don't know what to tell you right now. Let's let's come up with a solid plan. It was a very easy pivot to a 2 by 8 So this wall will withstand some serious wind. Fortunately, that's a south-facing wall, and in our region, our wind traditionally comes out of the southwest and okay. storms. So it's solid. Um, got a lot of windows in that, and it's nicely framed. So we're running 2 by 8s on that wall. But that's the beauty of the building, and if you... Um, if you were stuck with all steel, you can't modify that. You can't grow steel. Right. Uh, you can kind of. You got some some flexibility in that lumber, and so that was a big, big value at that moment in time where I would have really been in trouble had it not been for lumber in the equation. So that was awesome. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's. Um, yeah, kind of where and we I are. mean, to your defense, the you know the guys you were working with, I think they went to lunch and wanted to have an answer within like you know thirty an minutes hour? or something or an we hour, an hour. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, so the, Jake called me and I'm like, you know what? Let's figure this out. And yeah, we just bang through it. They yeah. worked all morning and then kind of ran into that problem when they got to that wall and and the the foreman was like, okay, we're gonna go break for lunch. I need I don't want to have my guys just sitting around while we're making a decision sure. on the clock. So he said, let's uh, let's break for lunch. We're gonna go eat. That's and cool. when I get back, try and have an answer for me. So that's when I call Corey, and, and um, we talked it through and came up with that plan. And so they got back, and I said, use that stack of lumber right there, two by eights. You're going two by eight now. He goes, okay. 
off they went, and they had it done in like a couple hours. It was wow. crazy. So, which is total random. I mean, we really don't see that That's very not often. It's, yeah. yeah, it's sure. not common at all. But I mean, you know, it does happen. I mean, you get concrete guys that'll come in, oh, and yeah. they they're poor and they're doing their job. It's hot. It's sweaty. They're working, and they're some guys can read a set of plans. Some can't, right. and you know, it it's not completely unheard of, but it's not a common thing. And at the same time, if it does happen, you know, there is a solution usually yeah. for it. So, yeah, that is hat tip to this this brand and the construction of that building that that just that's cool it's nice yeah. to have that ricky's i think was perfect from the start wasn't it yeah and that's another thing too like let's talk about the diy and and my my ill preparation uh super easy you just you just show the plans to the guy and he pours it and sinks the studs and or whatever they're called anchors i guess <laughs> right yeah there's anchor bolts yeah. anchor yeah. bolts yeah, yeah. they're studs in my world of yeah four wheeling yeah but, right you know, they're anchor bolts and that so he just sinks them there and then the trusses match up to it and it's just measurements and plans i mean it's so it's so simple hindsight <laughs> so did you use a uh, a great all to lift up the trusses or what did you use to put the trusses in place so we just rented from like the local home depot a uh a lull or whatever it's called just a big forklift yeah yeah uh, an off-road like forklift all, yeah and I mean, it, reach forklift. Yeah, did not need that. I mean, really could have used a regular forklift. I was really? so over for mine. You uh-huh. know, I did a I did a thirty by forty. Yours looks pretty tall though. How tall is yours? Is. So I got ten foot walls. It's it's twenty one foot to the peak. To I believe. the peak. Okay. Um, that steeper pitch looks yeah. so cool, yeah. and it yeah. makes Steep, it so nice when you go steeper inside. Steeper pitch does make it, it okay, get, and it gives it a big feel inside. Sure. You know, I mean, a twenty by or excuse me, a thirty by forty. Uh, and I took some of the interior room out. I'm actually, my goal for this building is um, I'm going to work in there every day. So I work from home. Uh, I'm the marketing director at RCV. Right. So I don't have to fortunately travel to Rockford, Illinois to do my job. I can, I can do it from, sure. from remote. So I've been working remote now for nine, ten years, something like that. And it's great. I love working from home. You know, it's as leisurely as, as people say, but also it's a little bit challenging to maintain motivation. Sure. Especially in the winter time when you, you know, don't see the literally don't see the light of day because you yeah. don't have to go outside. Yeah. So, you know, now I'll be able to go in. I did a 10 by 12 room in my shop where it's going to be completely closed off from the rest of the shop. It'll be my clean room, if you will, which, yeah. well, I thought I needed a clean room. It turns out the whole shop's going to be a clean room. But a um, studio. Yeah, yeah, I've got a studio now. That, but um, well, and know. Jake's separating his out too. He's got a really cool kind of interior layout. Do you have a second to throw that down, Jake, and explain <laughs> sort of what you're doing? Yep. Inside. <laughs> Tell me the dream. Well, I mean, this is Carter Tracks HQ, right? I yeah, mean, this, it is. this is your personal yeah. HQ. This is Carter yeah. Tracks HQ. This is a little bit of everything, but you're putting it all in one building. That's right. It's my monstrosity, remember? Oh, uh, I love it. Monstrosity. Yeah, so to run through the dimensions real quick, my main bay is 36 by 50, so it's 36 wide, 50 deep, 16 foot walls. The ridge of that is about 23 feet, I think, so it's a pretty big building. Uh, I went with 16 foot walls so that I can get lifts in there. I have five Jeeps currently. Uh, <laughs> and so that's all. That's all. Uh, I bought one lift used that I'm just going to stack two Jeeps on uh, back in the corner. So I'll put one up on the lift, set it down on the locks, and then roll another one under it yeah. uh, just for storage. And then uh, I'll buy another one. Um, another Jeep? Another Jeep? Or another, another <laughs> uh, I'll plead the fifth. Uh, another lift. And that'll be my primary up and down lift. So I'll put it on one side. Uh, I'm going to build a mezzanine behind it, um, up ahead of it. And I'm going to put all my mechanics tools underneath that. So it's close to that vehicle that I'll be working on on the lift. And then around to the side, off of that main bay, I've got a 24-foot long by about 14-foot out lean-to, so to speak. So it's it's half of a Miracle Trust truss bolted to the outside of my main bay trusses. Which is pretty simple to do. Um, the only curveball I threw into the mix when I was working with Corey was I wanted to do this diagonal. If you can visualize this little protrusion coming off the side, I wanted to have this diagonal concrete pour that went at about a 45 over to the main bay so that I could walk around out of that fab room, which is what that'll be used for, to get into where that vehicle's sitting on that lift right there on the other side of that uh, wall. Gotcha. So I'll have this interior wall. Uh, and then doors on either side. So I think I'm going to do a gar- roll-up garage door on one and then maybe like a big sliding gr- barn door on the other. Um, that's kind of my current plan. But um, anyway, yeah, so it's it's got this separate dimension. And the idea was to have that room that I could partition off so I wouldn't get a bunch of grinder dust 
all over vehicles sitting out in that main bay and uh, i can put all those um the dirty tools basically all the stuff that puts dust in the air in that room and then i'm going to frame in a little bitty tiny bathroom with a toilet um and a probably a deep sink in there uh, so it's just kind of off on that corner but um yeah that's kind of walking through the dimensions of it that's kind of okay. how it looks if you can visualize that um but yeah it's big you get it erected and awesome. stood up and it's like holy smokes this thing is like a cathedral and what's weird too is actually as we've added more monstrosity, monstrosity as we've added more and more lumber to it and uh cory tells me even after we put the metal on it it even looks bigger it's really weird yeah. like um i don't know i, I would have thought that that would have made it feel smaller but it actually feels bigger as we're going so it's really bizarre but um yeah those walls are big the the um the construction was a little bit on a different level than like Ricky's building on that size. I ended up buying a scissor lift with a friend uh, who's building the Miracle Trust building. And uh, it's kind of funny. He went in with me on this, this scissor lift. We got it for like 2,500 bucks. It was road hard, put up wet. <laughs> Um, needed a lot of a lot of work, but what's I trust that. Oh, what's boy. hilarious is he's like all in. He's like, man, whatever we got to do to keep it running, any parts that we're just split fifty fifty. I'm like, okay, great. Then I learned like a year end ownership with him that he's terrified of heights, and he won't even <laughs> he won't even get near it. Yeah. It's hysterical. So it's like my scissor lift now, and I'm, I guess go. I'm gonna have to help put his building up there with it. Go. But anyway, that was a you know pro tip if you're gonna build a bigger one. And you can find just a used scissor lift. You can resell these things, no problem. So really? buy a freaking scissor lift because you're going to use it a lot going up and down, putting that lumber, all those purlins up top. That's what we call the roof rafters is a yep. purlin. Yep. Um, you go up and down a lot. So very valuable tool. So you, because I was watching your build. Um, <clears throat> so you pulled up the the actual trusses, the metal trusses with the No, lift, so we or? stood those up with a forklift. Okay. A lot of yeah. people call it a telehandler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and so a reach forklift. That's what yeah, I mean. yeah, a telehandler. And so in concert with a scissor lift okay. and some gotcha. scaffolds, gotcha. we have some scaffolding, too, that we're, we're putting okay. in the mix. So, yeah, we ended up um, – so I – here's a little bit of background and if it, anybody considering buying a, a miracle trust building um <clears throat> in my situation basically what i bought was all of the steel trusses all of the sheet metal and all of the fasteners and then they give you then it, so that's all covered in that cost and then on you you have your concrete cost you have the whatever fastener you use to anchor the trusses to the concrete slab um, whether you sink J bolts in that concrete ahead of time, or you drill and bolt, um, and but they also cover the fasteners that attach your exterior material, like in my case sheet metal, to your purlins and your girts, and then they give you a very good list of all of the lumber that you're going to need to put that building together. Wow. So you can go and start soliciting quotes with all of your lumber suppliers locally, and pick your pick your supplier and sure. have them deliver the lumber and you've got everything on site ready to go and so, we can supply the wood too but yeah it generally makes sense to get it locally i mean lumber is usually not hard to come by there's no sense in us manu you know handling it uh you know shipping it out there to you and having you know if you get a bad yeah. board if something gets bent whatever like you know it's just easy for you to be able to replace it locally so sure. and my, most people prefer to get it locally yeah i bought the building through miracle trust uh, in 2020 before everything just went haywire in this world and um so that was great when i went to, when i went to go get lumber when i was about ready to order lumber i sat on that a little bit and let letter uh lumber settle down a little bit because it had spiked significantly oh, yeah. when i was like okay i need to get get ready to order this so I, I sat on that a little bit before i was ready to order i got about six quotes and i was shocked at how significant the differences were in quotes um, so I ended up being able to pick a lumber company that was way less. I almost went half wow. of the cost of my, my highest cost. So wow. <clears throat> shop that around a little bit yeah, locally. That pays for sure. But, yeah, going back to the lift thing. So when we were all ready to go and start putting the building up, uh, I decided to go with drill and bolt anchor bolts. And I bought them through Hilti big brand in the industry yep. and they make this really cool product that is, you drill the hole um, and then they've got a bolt that kind of looks like a giant screw it's got these really thin threads they're not very um, very deep um, but it's got a hex head so you can run it down with an impact on a on a like a half inch drive yep. cordless impact um, impact tool 
and uh, they've got this little packet that is an epoxy mix. And so you got a two-part epoxy in two little chambers of the packet, and you drill the hole, blast it out with air, and then drop the packet in and ram your bolt down there with an impact, and you are done. And you can actually remove it at least once and re-bolt it down in the event you need to do some adjustment for whatever reason. It's not permanent permanent. You can pull that bolt out because once the epoxy hardens, you're basically, you need to start it back in, hand attach it or, or run it in by, with your hand. Okay. So that you're grabbing the right thread that's cut into the epoxy and the concrete. Oh, gotcha. And then once you got it engaged, it's no different from making sure you're not cross-threading a right. bolt on your Jeep. Get it running in a little bit by hand. You should be doing that. Uh, and then ram it in with the impact so you're you not don't just start with the impact yeah. no 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 no, no. <laughs> no. Isn't, it, isn't it funny how passionate you are now about this this what i would consider to be a random concrete fastener right like but now <laughs> yep. you are you are so well versed in i don't understand the science behind it yeah and yeah. I, I wanted to know what the loads are um, sure. but those fasteners are on you as the the buyer of a miracle trust building that's something they don't provide because there's all kinds of variables there and i understand that so that's what I chose to go with. Some results may vary. You might find something that you like better, but I do recommend them just for the simplicity. And I like the the flexibility of being able to move the foot of that building around a little bit. In the event you got a concrete guy that goofs, sure, you've got a little bit of flexibility Wiggle there. Um, so fortunately, my main bay was all square, and the guy did a great job with it. He just was a little bit off on that side room, so we were okay. But um, anyway, so that's what I used. Um, but the lull lift... Um, was a thousand dollar a day rental and i rented it had it delivered on a friday of new year's weekend and this year new year's day was on a monday so they said as long as you don't go over eight hours we're going to come and pick this thing up on tuesday after the holiday and if you didn't go over eight hours you were charged for a one day rental so i had the thing for three days yay and i had nice. tacoma white who's out here at trail hero who yeah, lives kind of close cousin. to us Tacoma cousin, works. Yeah, your, my your cousin, cousin, my Tacoma, my yeah, my cousin Tacoma. Um, yeah, so he shows up. He's got a lot of experience with heavy equipment. So we put him in the seat, and he was really um, proficient with shutting the machine off. Once we got something into position, he just cut the key so we're not running the hours out. Oh. And so then we would kind of work on getting things adjusted and, and getting the bolts together loosely to get the truss up. But we, we drilled and bolted the vertical trusses first and got them square uh and then we assembled the the roof pieces on the ground so we just bolted together loosely in the center of that roof span of the truss and then lifted it with webbing straps and this lift way up in the air and then brought it down with guys on either end to wiggle them around and get them connected to the top of the vertical trusses. Yeah, there's a there's, there's different ways to do it. Yeah, there's but, different ways to do it, but there's a lot of adjustment in there, and that's yeah. that's I mean the way you did it is how most people do it. So we would just do the back truss first, and then we worked our way forward with the building, and we would just install enough purlins and girts just to hold them together and tie them together, and then just work forwards towards the front of the building. Uh, until we had enough freestanding there. We, we kept some ratchet straps in places to make sure everything was sure. nice and stable and the event wind picked up, but um, that's how we did it. Yeah, cool. It was yeah. a pretty easy process, honestly. I was, I was intimidated by it, um, but once I had enough people on the ground, uh, the crew, I, I had a guy, a crew of some guys that had some experience okay. doing red iron buildings. That's their first ever miracle truss, but it goes together effectively the same way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was pretty straightforward. That's cool. Even though this thing was gigantic, um, it it went together pretty easy. It was like a big erector set for adults. And that's that's funny that you say <laughs> that because that we literally tell our prospective clients that all the time. I stole they, your thunder. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but it is. It's all bolted together. You know, it's yep. DIY DIY capable, and you can really build it however you want. So, so. what I'm hearing here is if you're Mechanical, which most of us are in the off-road uh, arena here. It just bolts here. together. Um, and you got some carpentry, basic carpentry skills. You can, or not. You can do this. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. The, another thing, too, that it's also nice, when you're putting a truss that high up in the air, I mean, my peak was 20, 23 feet, the webbing strap. I mean, heck, we were probably at 25 feet, probably, up in the air. That's intimidating. And it's uh -huh. even worse with something like a red iron truss because that's super heavy. Miracle truss trusses are not really that heavy. 
they're very strong for what they are, but there's a lot of open air and it's uh-huh. not solid steel. Well, it's built like a bridge truss. Yeah. You know, yeah, the strength exactly. of that triangle is, yep. is into our design. So I was able to manage a lot of that stuff on the ground myself or maybe one other guy. We could lift and move a truss around uh, a component, not assembled. Right. Uh, but you can take pieces and you can move them around independently without a whole lot of trouble. So that's kind of nice also. You're not dealing with 500 pound pieces of steel hanging in the air above your head. That's intimidating. Sure. Once you get going with this, it's like, geez, this is really easy. Um, the hardest part is just trying to get trusses kind of to line up when you're trying to get the bolts to line up sure. in the corner. So having a, what do you call them, Corey? The um, the tool. It's just like a steel pin. Yeah. But they taper. Uh, there's a name for it. I can't think of it. But you can ram this steel we, pin through a hole. We call it, very technical term, uh, a lineup. <laughs> lineup tool, yeah. lineup rod. Will you yeah. grab me that lineup? Yeah. No well, problem. you can use like a center hole punch or like anything yeah. that's big that just yep. okay. slam it in there. Even heck, even a big screwdriver works. Having just it to tapered get it into helps because you can kind of get it through both holes, and then as then you're lowering, it, it kind of guides it into yeah. place, and then you run a bolt through it and get a nut on it, there and you're you done. So, yeah. Yeah, we we arguably didn't really look at the instructions as much as we should. Um, <laughs> For, uh, for no, there was no argument there. <laughs> no. Oh, but, but, not to uh, Ricky's. To Ricky's defense, it was his contractor who tried oh, to put it up, yeah. and, we, and we see that. You know, guys come in and they, they think they know what they're doing. They think they like, know what they're doing. Different. They've been building a building for building buildings yeah. for years, yeah. and they come in and they're like, "We're just going to do it," and then they get going, and yes. they're used to wood or they're used to all steel, and not that there's really much of a learning curve, but you know, they're so, just yeah. trying to do it their way. On my size building, I don't know what the actual professional, real way of raising the trusses were. Uh, but we just bolted it all together and then raised it up, and it was very efficient. I mean, it was. Yeah. We had all what? F- I think how many do I have? Four. So four main trusses on mine up in a day. Wow. I mean, it was just that's super, common. That's a good way to do it. Super super quick. And then we got them up, and then we kind of loosened them, and you know, got them all perfect, and then tightened it all back down, and um, you know, massaged it around a little bit, because you know, when you're lifting that much weight, things will move around. And uh, yeah, so it's it's straightened up. So good. from like where you're at, Ricky, like you're almost done. Um, what what would you? No, <laughs> Jake shaking his head. Just over shaking here. my head. Oh yeah. boy. Well, okay, so you're further along than Jake. But what would you like change? Right? Because there's always something. Like, oh, how yeah. long did you spend on the design process? And then because you eventually have to pull the freaking trigger, right? You're sitting there. You're like, okay, I want this, this, this. And there's always the, okay, well, the, the non-negotiables that you're going to do regardless. You're going to figure out how to make it work. To the, oh, the pie in the sky stuff that, oh, I'd really like to have this. I'd re-, you know, then you got to start to value engineer it because, you know, unless you got a tree in the backyard that's got a bunch of, you know, hundreds hanging off of it. You, you know, know, we talk about value engineering all, all the, time. the time. So talk the about the business. Yeah, we do. We yes, do. Because absolutely. it's important to us to get our design right and to make sure right. it's a quality product. We put a lifetime warranty on our frames, but we talk about value engineering yeah. because there's a way to get it to get the quality product to come across and do it affordably for right. people. Doesn't so, mean it's cheap. It means it's affordable. But it's here's, the right way. here's the deal because, uh, you know, I did landscape construction stuff and it's like, okay, well, we have to have a pool. We have to have a hot tub. We have to have this. But, okay, well, maybe we don't do the bougie finish on the pool and that gives you some money to do this that you want to do, the fire pit over here or whatever it is. So, same thing with any construction. So, talk about some of that stuff that you guys encountered that. You had to, you know, some compromises and stuff from what you had a vision yeah, starting so, out. I mean, obviously, I, you know, now that I have it, I, I, the the cost of going bigger is is not that much, right? Up front, it seems all, oh, you know, yeah, because I could have been thirty by fifty, and at this time, that would allow me to pull my truck and trailer in together, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the number one thing everybody says is I should have gone a little bit bigger, right? Well, yeah, I'm sure you can say that no matter what size you choose, right? right? Absolutely. Um, They're never big enough. We have never built a building that's too big for our clients. Our clients always come back and say that. They always say, geez, I wish I would have gone five feet or ten feet longer. So my argument for me is that I I can't be any bigger. Yeah, well, not really because of the neighborhood necessarily, but I just pushed it out to every limit for property setbacks. I even got a variance on my setback to push it out even further. 
I have field lines for my septic system yeah. that is a limitation. So I can always argue if anybody's like, well, do you feel like you should have built it any bigger? And it's like, I, I can't I even can't. say it because I, I couldn't have. Yeah. But I have 100% maxed it out as big as I can. You did. But, yeah. you know, and it is like, I have not held back on anything. Everything about my design, I've tried to do everything possible and think sure. it through. So, But, you know, aside from that, um, a little details is I should have done like, I don't know what the, the official term is, but like a curb on my concrete. So, you know, a raised all the way around the building, you know, so. Stem I, wall is what stem most wall. people call so, it. Yeah, yeah, so like, you know, four inches tall, six inches tall or whatever. Sure. Uh, to build the base up from uh, for the building. That way I could, you know, pressure wash it out or whatever and not have to worry about it. Um, in lieu of that, I'm actually doing, you know, you've been to like a hospital, you see like the rubber bases around yeah. the walls there. Yeah. So I'm actually just sealing it with okay. waterproof sealant on my walls at the baseboards uh, underneath basically the, the OSB wall to the concrete. So I'm sealing that and then I'm getting those rubber baseboards for lack of a better term and then I'm gluing that Got it. with waterproof sealant. So I'm excited to, to see the, the end result of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds so interesting. interesting. It is but interesting. the concrete would have been way more efficient to res sure. to, for the same effect, right? Because okay. I want to still be able to get in there and hose it out if I need to. Sure. Um, garage door should have been taller, you know. I didn't. I measured my vehicles and everything was fine. And then I was like, "Well, I didn't measure them on a trailer, so you know, oh, little yeah. things like that." So always go tall with your garage door, dude. Yeah. Ricky, you know, with enough momentum, you can get it through the door, though. <laughs> well, and honestly, I can just change the. I mean, the truss is bolted up, and I can just you know change it a little bit. I I really could make that change at any time. Uh -huh. You know, um, I just you know have sure. It. Um, but and then I would have chosen. Now that I know, I, I, w I didn't know at the time, but now that I've finished this, it's all white in my shop. It's just super bright. Uh, we're doing semi-gloss white on everything. And the trusses come uh, flat gray. Uh -huh. And it looks pretty good, flat gray. That's a primer, um, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it looks more modern. You know, a lot of steel buildings are doing like a red. Yeah, the, yeah you really the gray don't, looks good. You don't have to paint them. I mean, they look pretty good as is. But now that I'm gone white, I'm like, man, they would have looked good black. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, a, a few detail. things. A few things. But this is all like finished. Like functionally wise, I'm really happy. I mean, there's nothing that I'm super mad at myself about other than that concrete. I could have gone that because then I wouldn't have to worry about I have water runoff issues sure. or whatever else, you know. Just gotcha. go, go taller on the concrete, put it up there on a on a big old pad. That's or or do advice. stem wall, yeah, or yeah. stem yeah. wall. Yeah. You know, I mean, the stem wall would have been the that's the move. Now, I, do I, you have the anchors already in the concrete, or did you? Yeah, we. So they looked at the prints or the the engineer yeah. drawings, and they sank them right where they're supposed to be. The trusses lined up perfectly. I mean, it was a. Uh, it was easy. Perfect. That's cool. That's interesting because we had one yeah. each way. And, and honestly, we tell our clients that. You can do it either way. So uh, it's cool to see that both of you guys had a different experience with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My guy, I mean, I, I contracted it out, and he recommends sinking it in there. He's like, do you plan on making any modifications? I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is one and done. I don't want to move a wall. Um, and he was like, okay. Because Jake and I had talked about this before. Jake really helped me a lot with my questions and concerns on the details as you might have been able to tell he's a bit of a detail guy right right so down to a gnat's ass i, I got a list in them that's what i love about you jake suggestions that's, that's why he's a cartographer yeah yeah ex that's not for people that gloss over things right that's right? the biggest word you'll can't use be just this week like, exactly that's my 50 point scrabble word cartographer cartographer yeah i actually know a cartographer yeah but, uh, but yeah it, it's yeah he gave me a lot of information details. up front on that and we made the educated decision after and i'm happy with it you know i mean like jake said he can expand and do all this stuff um with his fasteners uh, I don't want to, but I can also. The back wall, the way it's the shop's built, if I really wanted to, I can take out that center support, unbolt it, and go out another 10 feet, and wow. put up another yeah, truss, and bolt the cool. center support back. Yeah, and the trusses are modular. I mean, I guess we didn't even, you know, we probably didn't even talk about that because you had your design down, but you can always pull the sheet metal off the back end wall or front end wall pull the wood out and you can literally just keep, keep adding on, yeah you're gonna keep adding sections e adding cool. trusses and so, lengthen the building down the road as your time or I mean, your budget allows in the back of my head i have a dream of doing a separate room so i'll leave the wall basically okay. kind of and then you know add a extra little bit because like a kick out well yeah. yeah if 
if my life goes down the path we're trying to, the wife really wants a boat. Uh-huh. So I want to have a little place that doesn't encroach. Boats take up an unreasonable amount of space. You know what boat stands for, right? I break don't. out another thousand. Bust out another thousand. Uh, well, or break I out have, another thousand. Well, then just what I need. That's right on par with, <laughs> right on par with my other hobbies. Okay. So. You layer oh. boats on top of Jeeps, and you're yeah. really quickly yeah. losing money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some horses in the mix, you're going to be really financially... That, uh, that boat doesn't need the, the bougie work area and all that. It go. just needs to be stored. So, right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, those are my, my biggest things. Electrical, we put a plug every... Uh, I want to say every 10 feet. We put four receptacles every 10 feet. Um, I, don't, I think we did it 36 inches high, like workbench high. Sure around it then I, I i did i'm doing my finished i don't know if i touched on that too much but i'm doing a finished office in there that has sheetrock i did osb across the walls and metal on the end walls just okay. for aesthetics um but the the sheetrock work and all that was i'm not i'm not a perfectionist i guess i want to be i want it to look perfect but the time that it takes for sheetrock and all that sure that's crazy yeah um the osb looks great by the way that's cool anybody's ever thinking about it super cheap super easy yeah yeah you said you would put it up and then no hold on morgan painted it more yeah my wife did my wife did a majority of the painting work i will admit way to go morgan Um, but she i was hanging it and she was painting it so what about uh, any surprising costs? Like, I know the cost of concrete kind of surprises people when they, uh, you know, do stuff like this. But what, what kind of like, um, holy crap. Or I would say possibly, I'd say insulation and floor. Those are my two splurges. Uh-huh. Um, the floor, I thought I could have gotten a $300 bucket of stuff and spread it out on my floor. Oh, I the really epoxy. Did. Uh-huh. Yeah, I really thought I could have done that. And I can. You absolutely can yeah. do that. But... It's going to look like a $300 epoxy e- floor. Exactly. And that's the first thing anybody's going to notice. Yeah. And as well as the functional benefit. I don't want it to pull up. And yeah. like this hot tire pull up in the epoxy world, they always say hot tire pull up. And right. that's when you come in off the road and you park and you leave it there, which is exactly what I do with all my things. Right. I'm, to, I'm going to drive a, you know, a 40 inch Nitto in there hot off the highway and park it with arguably too little air pressure and it's gonna hook and pull up my crappy floor that i've did myself so and i would do the same thing with 42 inch bfgs yeah it's probably crazy. crawlers you know yeah. the red labels yeah mounted on uh race line what is it you know? well <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on methods <laughs> but i mean you know <laughs> yeah what wheel what wheels are we all doing we our, our right wheel now? and tire Shameless plugs plug. yeah i'm thinking about with my concrete actually having a guy polish it where they grind it and get it nice and smooth um and then seal it so, so it, that was, it'll still I be a pretty light sweet. color. That is but the industrial way to do it. Yeah, yeah sure. I, considering what I'm going to be doing in there, running floor jacks over it and jack my, stands and my guys everything. Are, it doesn't that look good. My guys around me was yeah, uh, nice. uh, nine dollars a square foot for that, Jake. So shop that around. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's not. Yeah, cheap. that I'm looking at the picture now that you put up on IG. Uh, beautiful floor. I had a similar floor in my garage in in San Jose. And I loved it. It looked awesome. The bad thing is, you drop a nut or bolt on that, yeah, you're can't like find TV it. wonder it's looking for that. Yeah, yeah you so can't find it. Interesting. Uh, as long as it's not a new install, you're fine. Because all my rusty, nasty bolts. <laughs> yeah, I there you go. Oh, you can differentiate. floor, and I can find them instantly. Yeah, I'm, so, a, I'm a CJ owner. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll be all right. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, there'll be a trail of rust that right. goes along that'll fall down next to that. I'm actually nut. lucky getting the nut off in the first place. It's <laughs> just like, yeah. Yeah, and having some texture to it is key. Um, funny story I'll never forget. Guy that was epoxy in my floor, and... Uh, and I go, hey, you know, I want some texture to it, but I don't want too much. And he goes, well, when it gets wet, it gets a little slippery. Then he says, let me tell you a story. He goes, uh, had this guy, this car fanatic, and he, he wanted a super polished floor. And he goes, this thing, you better put carpets down and stuff because it's going to get slippery. The wife came in on the first rainstorm, hit the brakes, and went into the living room. Oh, no. It was oh, an goodness. ice rink. It was an ice rink. Wow. So, yeah. I go, oh, yeah, let's put a little, little rough on that. But anyways... They, that looks awesome, man. That I that looks it. super cool. Yeah, we're, we're happy, and it, and it gives me the nicer it's become, the more likely it is that we're going to spend more time. In well, there. yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's like we talked about at the beginning. It's the man cave. It's you. You want it to be a place to have you know some fun, entertain, and and get some work done. And especially you, both of you guys are working out of these buildings, so. Um, so, Jake, where you're at now, um, what, anything you would change that, that you're seeing so far or, or anything? 
Yeah, so I've I've actually done a little bit of show prep here and have a little bit of a list of some things that I would recommend and do's and don't do's. Um, I think the biggest thing I could say just out of the gate is to while you're having the conversation with Miracle Trust and you're planning your building and you're working on dimensions and you're trying to hone in on that final design, um, you need to be talking a lot with concrete people trying to figure out where you need to be in timeline between concrete and uh, building delivery. Um, one of my mistakes I believe I made, um, 100% my mistake, was going ahead and getting that building shipped to me and I didn't have a concrete guy that was uh, well, I mean, it's common throughout the industry, I think. It's really a struggle to try and get people to physically show up. <laughs> yeah. And I can't pour concrete myself on that level. I mean, this is a huge slab. It was like 64 yards of concrete, I think, was the end, all, the end tally. Um, that's a four-inch thick slab with deeper pits for, for the, two different areas for lifts yeah. and then my whole footer all the way around. This is a tremendous amount of concrete, getting the guy to show up. So um, we had building delivered and had to sit on that and i had to move it from a second property so i was hesitant to unband it because i was going to have to move it again which is also a mistake so my advice to anybody considering building a miracle trust building is make sure you've got the timelines coordinated correctly to where you've got concrete poured and cured honestly before the building is delivered so that you're ready to go up with that that building so that that because you really need to unband the trusses as fast as possible as soon as you get them. Uh, ideally, you get them delivered to your site where you're going up with the building, so you don't have to move them far. Again, you can move them by hand with two people. They're not super heavy. Um, a tractor and some, a, you know, a bucket with some forks on it or something wouldn't hurt, but um, that's my biggest advice right out of the gate is just try and coordinate that timeline as best you can to make sure you got concrete ready to go and it's poured and it's cured. Uh, for you to do anchor bolts uh, if you're doing that um, or you know the J bolts are already in it Uh, but make sure you don't sit on the steel for long in a field somewhere with bands around it because um, you you can spend some time if you do run into that situation you can move things around once you get the trusses up I I utilize some big ratchet straps to kind of pull stuff back into alignment like I wanted um, and it wasn't really that hard. It just took a little bit of eyeballing and thinking and, and figuring out, strategizing which direction to pull them. But once you start getting purlins and girts in there, it starts to square up nicely okay. with, with some straps on it. Yeah, so I think what Jake is talking <clears throat> about, and just to make it clear to anybody that's listening, is the trusses, if you leave them banded, metal expands, it contracts, sure. and when you weld on it, you know, yep. anybody that works on their, their buggies or on their Jeeps or on maybe a Toyota, probably not. But if you work on a Toyota, even. Oh, no, they work on them a lot. Oh, yeah, think, that's right. right? right. Yeah. Um, you know, metal moves. And so unbanding the trusses is one of our main recommendations right out of the gate as soon as you get it delivered. So you don't get any twisting or any issues. And I think Jake had to deal with that a little bit. Um, and, you know, we, we definitely put that in our paperwork. We do talk to people about that, making sure that they know to unband it. But, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to. I knew. Yeah, I was oh, told. Oh no, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, it for was sure. just my for timeline sure. just for didn't sure. align very well. Part of it was COVID and just the the industry trying to catch up, trying sure. to get folks that that do those uh, those trades like concrete. It's it's really hard. They got really behind with all the work that they had sure. put in front of them. So a lot of people wanted to build buildings all of a sudden. So so that was one big advice. Um, uh, that's probably the biggest one I would say shop around on your lumber uh at the end of the day just to give somebody a dollar figure my lumber for my building 2200 square foot building with 16 foot walls my lumber for the whole building was three grand wow which is really not that's bad that's not bad at all i was shocked it was that low and granted i shopped around i had about six quotes and they blew the others out of the water wow. yeah. so and they delivered it all for 25 bucks it's crazy so yeah. that was well, a rab lumber company <laughs> Yeah, no yeah. kidding. No, Alabama. 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 I mean, Alabama. Sweet Come home, it's Alabama. It's a different country, Sweet remember? Is, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now, shop that around. Yeah. Now, in contrast, if you want, you can also call a guy and then immediately buy it the first time you call. 
and then have it delivered that same day for about twice as much. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But it, it requires, you know, only one phone call. Okay, that's so, cool. So do so some legwork. Cool. your priorities so yeah. I feel like Ricky might be speaking from the other side so, of the table. Yeah, so. yeah. Maybe call more than one person. Yeah. But, but no, what yeah. does make it easy is the list that Miracle Trust gives you. It's something you can just forward on to whoever. You just need an email address for that lumber right. company. Right. Here's, here's my... I'm going to give you your list. What do you call it? A, what do you call the lumber... Yeah, we call it a lumber schedule. Yeah. Lumber, lumber schedule. List, yeah. yeah, it was a funny word I wasn't used to, but... Um, uh, anyway, so that was one thing um, I went through, and I put a lot of effort into drainage. We talked about that yeah, earlier. Yeah. Um, I had some uh, some uh, airlines for running uh, air from an air compressor. I actually buried it through my slab. Yeah. And cool. so I've got airlines stubbed in in multiple places. I'm going to plant an air compressor underneath an enclosure, underneath sure. the stairwell, going up onto my mezzanine. So. Uh, that was something that kind of helps just to put that effort in a little bit before they pour the concrete. Once you've got form boards up and everything, you just lay your your, your airline in there. Um, and then we also ran conduit through my slab so that we can pull electrical underneath the slab instead of going up and over a wall and sure. back down. That saves you some money on electrical Wire, because yeah. wiring is Wire's expensive. So expensive. the shorter the run you can make, and then because I'm a map geek, I made a map layout of where all this stuff was laid before we poured the concrete so that when I'm drilling holes in my slab to put lifts up, I'm not hitting an electrical wire or an airline. Sure. I've, I'm trying to remember where exactly we did all that stuff because it's hidden from view once you pour that concrete. So that, that kind of helps. If you can pull tape measure off of your form boards and do some basic measurements and some notes to where everything was before that concrete buries it, and you forget where it was, and yep. you didn't take pictures. It's like, oh, oh crap! Yeah. I'm going to drill straight into this sure main enough. line running over to my air compressor. Jake or something. was brilliant with that. Most yeah, people don't even think idea. that far yeah. ahead, and he, so, I mean, and he you has all kinds of spots like where it comes me. In. You don't have to go and make a freaking map, but you can pull tape and make some notes and say, off of this back wall, I'm 25 feet in from this back wall, and then 10 feet off of this wall, and right. that's where my 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 main uh, electrical conduit or airline goes. So that's an advice I've got. Um, uh, I went with the, those epoxy anchor bolts from Hilti. That was pretty simple for me. It was something that I wanted to do that I think was simpler. Um, and the, the load ratings on those is significant. Those guys at Hilti said that if you have a tornado and it you know it blows everything away with an EF5 or something in North Alabama, which I, heaven forbid, never yeah. encounter, um, it'll pull the concrete out of the ground. You'll have a big block of concrete wow. before the bolt fails. Wow. So it's mm-hmm. pretty crazy. We always tell people... They build skyscrapers right. with drilling taps, right. yep. and that and that's right. the that's yeah. mind boggling to me, even as the you know a, a guy yeah. that's been in the building trades for so long. But it absolutely <laughs> blows my mind every I like time I hear about that. I like the epoxy and the the threads on these bolts. You have a mechanical and a chemical bond to the concrete, so you've got epoxy in the mix, but you've also got the mechanical bond also with those threads. So anyway, and then I'm going to use a product. We'll skip over to the, some insulation in my construction. I'm I'm going to use something called thermo. Uh, Thermoguard is what it is. It's okay. some people. <laughs> there's people that build rudimentary pole barns in the south, and they literally use bubble wrap, um, which is a barrier between their sheet metal and the lumber. Um, and so I found this product. It's actually made in Tennessee, called Thermoguard, uh, made by a company called Dutch Tech, and it's um, much more better engineered. Uh, but it's my idea is it's more better. <clears throat> it's more better. But what we're going to do, you basically get all your lumber on and you're ready. You're about ready to put your sheet metal on. You wrap it with this stuff. It's more rigid than bubble wrap, so it's not blowing in the wind while you're trying to adhere it. You staple it to your purlins and girts. Um, and then you lay your sheet metal over it, screw right through it. But the idea is if I ever have something, I'm, if I get into a situation where i got to remove sheet metal, i got um, you know a tree limb come through it or something from a neighbor or whatever, and you got to replace some sheet metal, I'm going to spray foam the inside and the spray foam, if you don't put something in between it, you're spraying directly to the sheet metal, and you can't get that metal it's off without apart. a whole lot of work. Yeah. So this is a barrier, and so okay. this spray will go directly to this material. Gotcha. And then I've got a thermal. It's got a little small R value. It's not significant. It's not my primary insulation, but it's a moisture barrier yeah. between your lumber and your steel. Sure. So that's why I'm using that. That's something I'm going to use. It's called Thermoguard. I've done my research on it. That's my decision. That's what I'm going to go with. So it's final answer. Some re- <laughs> results may vary for others, final, final. but that's what I'm going to going to use. Um, so um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I've got the suggestions. The biggest thing too is just make sure you try and 
get it dried in as quick yeah, as you can. Yeah. Um, in Alabama weather, it's it's pretty Especially, harsh yeah, with a lot of humidity yeah. and moisture, so you don't want that lumber sitting out there exposed really long. Um, I'm going to replace some purlins, just some some that have moved on me a little bit. They've okay. been up so long, but we're my goal is end of October. We get it dried in. All right, you're so close. You heard it here. Get her done, buddy. Yeah, heard it here first. Yeah, I, those guys that came and helped me you with the frame. You can do it. They kicked it in a high gear. Doing it all night long. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. That's good. So, Corey, as we're wrapping this thing up, what kind of crazy things have you heard requested uh, to build, or things that really stand out? Like, okay, we could do that, but you know, that's kind of that's kind of cool, or kind of like, what the hell? Um, I mean, we we've done all kinds of wild stuff. I mean, we've even built like pseudo bridges for properties that don't, you know, it's not a building, but we, because of the bridge like design of our trusses, we can do custom stuff like that. Uh, we've had decks that people want to put on top of their building. You know, even if it's a pitched building, they Uh want to put like a platform up there, some kind of a viewing area. Um, or hunting stand if you're in Alabama. Well, there you go. There it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you, again, if you can draw it, you, we can just about build it. Okay. So I mean, as far as wild goes, I mean, I think that's probably about as wild right. as I've come across. Yeah. What about like indoor wash bay, I want to do an indoor wash. Bay. Oh, we we have car washes that yeah. we've sold and okay. di- you know delivered, and people you know many many happy customers with that kind I of have use. A, yeah. A cold environment in the winter, and I I, I like to keep things clean. But now, now, Jason, you were considering putting up a miracle trust. Oh, I'm not considering. I am. It's just a matter of time. Now, you know, Uncle Sam got in the way of my finances here uh, when I moved, but it will happen. Don't don't kid yourself. Well, it we'd will love happen. to help you with it. Yeah. So uh, my goal is to begin design because I'm kind of a mix between the two here of Ricky and Jake. I'm I'm a perfectionist, but in my 52 years on this earth, I've learned that I need to throttle back from that because it it was kind of paralysis for me. I got so honed in on stuff, but I want you know obviously I want it to be a showcase. I want it to be nice. You got this vision, but financially, what can I afford? So you got to get that value engineering comes in and it's like, okay, what are my must haves? What would, are my like to haves? And what are the pie in the sky things that maybe we can figure out how to do? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and so to, to add to that financial thing, one thing I've learned with this whole project, it was super intimidating up front, right? Like this big old dollar value. Sure. Um, and then as the projects go on, generally they just get so much more expensive. Yeah. But it was so easy to finish this thing. I bought some wood, I bought some sheetrock, I screwed it to the wall. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm glazing over it a little bit, right. but somebody with skill, you don't there was no more there was no more contracting after it was dried in. Yeah. There was no more engineering. There was no more thought. It was just throw you know finish it out and then you know you don't have to build a sub wall you don't have to do all these other stuff and so that's that's the building what I, was ready to finish that's what I'm, I'm hearing and was my thought and you guys just confirmed it is that you can pretty much you know yes there's there's building costs and things change and we talked about lumber changing and all that stuff but i think budget wise you can set a pretty damn good budget and you know be within a few percent plus or minus of what you know the way that everything's engineered out of the gate definitely right yeah. is that, oh, is that a sure. safe safe call especially okay. if you do it all within a short period of time because as we all know gas sure. prices change sure. lumber prices steel change prices steel change, everything changes everything but changes. but if you get a quote you buy it you know you have it delivered you're working with your concrete company they're coming in getting that poured while the building is on order because you you really want to to jake's point you want to figure out the concrete but you don't necessarily want to go pour concrete before you decide on a building. You want to yeah. know what building yeah. you're going yeah. with yeah. first. Yeah. That's why I said. And yeah. Ideally, order the building so that you have the plans that you need to pour the concrete. But those costs, yeah, those costs can change if you don't do it right sure. away. Yeah, the sweet spot is making them those two tracks, the concrete and the building, in concert with one another. Just totally a agree. Congruent path. They're moving yeah. forward at the same time yep. so that when you're ready to go with both you just pull the trigger on both at the same time and right. concrete's done by the time the building shows up yeah. so yeah that's that's the the sweet spot if you can work that that's great it's a man, time management thing um and it's tough but that's that's what you need to do that's my best advice i think yeah. that i've learned lesson so, learned sounds like once you get that design done and you you rubber stamp it and send it off to miracle trust it okay build it it's you're you're dialed yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And getting it dried in, you can if you can like from a budget standpoint, if you can try and figure out your number to get it dried in, leave everything unfinished on the inside, and then you can kind of grow into it once you've got it dried in. Um, you know, you can get your sure. electrical work. It's it, it can slow down a little bit. And you don't have to rush as much once you got it dried in to do your electrical and your insulation, right. your floor, all that kind of stuff. So from a budget standpoint, if you can you know handle the cost of getting it dried in to that stage and then cash the rest that's a nice way to to manage it that's kind of my game plan right now cool yeah. um it's just trying to get it dried in and, we're rushing to try and you're and get building that done. equity through that process you know because you can do that as your time your budget right. allows at that point yeah i mean the mezzanine i talked about those they, those things will come later once we get it dried in sure. i can work in that environment it's cool yeah. the air conditioning running i'm yeah. doing three mini splits by the way wow um well three head units two outdoor i guess it's called a condenser i guess it's on the outside um some of those designs they can power up to three head units inside so i'm gonna have one power two and then the other one power one and we may add another one if we need to but that's my plan that's kind of the way to go right now is mini splits that's what ian did yeah tennessee he's all mini splits i've done i've I've got many splits they're real efficient that's cool yep all right, so uh, let's put a bow on this thing. Uh, Ricky, how do they get a hold of you if they want to see these cool pictures that you're putting up on the uh, interwebs here? So, yeah, I'm going to build my gallery. I am almost ready to build it. It's going to be on rickybphotography.com. You'll see a whole bunch of rock bouncing, a whole bunch of rock crawling. And then you'll see a tab that says my shop. <laughs> my because shop. Because I'm super proud <laughs> of it, man. I love it. That's like, that's cool. And then on IG? Yeah, so I'm Ricky B Photography on, on Instagram uh, and Facebook. Um you know, you can look me up, Ricky Berry. I, I have a pretty good Facebook, you know. <laughs> I, right on. I like the internet. I like the internet. Internet. And Jake, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, about the same, all, except Carta Tracks is the brand. So uh-huh. look at uh, Instagram. I've posted a lot of pictures and videos that we've been going. Uh, so that's Carta Tracks on Instagram and same with Facebook. Um, and then I'm Jake White on Facebook, just myself. Um posted a lot personally there as well so um yeah that's it we should hopefully have this thing dried in by the end of next We're, this month this month actually right, october let's, let's have cool. some respective shop parties I'll yeah have, i'll have my oh idea. man there you go Dude, yeah, we're throwing a big old party. I'm going to invite that lady on next door over to come check it out. <laughs> I'm coming too. <laughs> come see my mon- monstrosity. My monstrosity is yeah. the monstrosity. I might even house. have a sign made to put over you it. Totally Jake's should. monstrosity. You Welcome. Totally should. Her name, is, it sounds like Karen too. It's Sharon. <laughs> oh, Sharon. Yeah, Sharon. Sharon's a Karen. You want to drop her address? I was going to say, you want Sharon is Karen. <laughs> Sharon is Karen. <laughs> yeah, we're going to throw her an invite. I'll drop it in her mailbox once we figure out who she is. Maybe Jason yeah. and I will take our rigs down and go, yeah. see, go to your shop open Man, houses awesome. or your parties awesome. and we'll but go wheeling down like, there this is my pride i mean in? i'm i'm very <laughs> very proud of what i'm putting together i'm proud of the the product that miracle trust makes and sure yeah i mean that lady can just be a sharon karen yeah, over sure. there and Whatever. i'm i'm gonna live in this thing players gonna play haters gonna yeah. hate that's Co- right Corey. So. how do they get a hold of you uh miracle trust.com of course that's our website we have all of our social pages pinterest instagram facebook uh, i think we even have linkedin pages uh, if you want to take a peek at some of the projects we do you know we don't post everything but we try to post all the pertinent stuff or things that we feel are going to make an impact and maybe inspire someone uh if you want to know any jeep stuff we're on mirror crawl uh mirror crawl off road uh or you can Check look up big, big daddy, daddy yeah and big daddy lj so yeah we we'd love to have you that's cool well, yep. This this has been fun, gentlemen. Uh, love love the history in wheeling and wheeling and your history with Trail Hero. I didn't realize um, you'd been involved uh, since day one, pretty much as well. There, Corey. So, um, ton of information. I love it. Uh, I think this is going to have to continue at a, a later date to to make sure that Jake finished his shop and and then how it. Yeah, we do out. have to give him right? time to finish right? it. Yeah, let's do a follow up when Jake's <laughs> okay. done. Oh, all Lord. right, let's all do right. that. So next year we so should be year, done with this thing. Year, yeah. Wait a minute, you said end of October now. Yeah, but next yeah. year at Trail Hero, we want to yeah, we'll see some pictures. We'll do a recap. Wow. Yeah, I love it. I love it, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, I, I think this is going to be a, a a great listen for people out there that are dreaming to build some sort of you know enclosure for their toys and and tools oh, pull yeah, the just trigger go, guys just those go. of you that are sitting on the fence pull the trigger and get it done yeah go do the 3d builder or whatever it's called it's that that's that's how they get you yeah they, that's <laughs> and the, right and the builder doesn't show everything that our capabilities are so if you want to do something and it, it doesn't allow you to do it just call us or draw it out and send it to us but right. yeah if you want to yeah. be complicated like me with a 
residential house pitch and eaves and gutters and all the other stuff. So yeah. you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Super flexible. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we're out. Out.